The Property Casualty Insurers Association of America conference was held recently, and the theme of the conference was how insurers should be planning for business disruptions, whether it be economic, political, regulatory, or even societal in nature. I think technology is playing a large role in terms of the types of products that uh, the uh, insureds are looking for. So, you know, there are a number of disruptors that are facing the industry, or at least potential disruptors, that we see as, as a potential challenge, but also a potential opportunity for the insurance market in the years to come. And what I mean by that are perhaps changing product demands, changing uh, buying habits, you know, you talk about Amazon or Yahoo getting into distribution. The current state of distribution where clearly bigger is better, a lot of M&A on the broker side, and these brokers are looking for smaller underwriting panels, smaller panels of reinsurers in, in terms of that risk transfer, and also very different forms of capital. So these capital structures are changing dramatically. You know, you've got hedge fund reinsurers, you've got ILS, uh, the large international reinsurers have set up transformer vehicles to move risk out into the capital markets. So all of these things are evolving very rapidly today. You know, and our advice to uh, insurance company management would be to kind of recognize these changing market dynamics and look for opportunities within them. Going into 2015, M&A has been a, a huge topic. It's still a dominant theme, uh, no doubt about it. In particular, uh, <clears throat> some of the, the focus is on some of the, uh, the money coming from Asia, you know, westward. Um, capital convergence, that's been a topic, you know, certainly well before 2015, but still continues to, um, to be part of the landscape and, and, the, and the discussions. There's still a lot of pressure out there. I mean, uh, management teams don't have it easy. Um, you know, there's uh, pressure on rate, pushing downward. Um, everyone, you know, wants to find a way to, to be relevant, to grow, but, you know, growing too much is is got its challenges as well. So, you know, they're trying to pick their spots. Another clear opportunity would be bridging that gap between the economic loss and the insured loss, you know, particularly in developing markets where, you know, you really need that kind of public-private partnership, the insurance and reinsurance communities working with governments to try to provide that kind of protection where it's uh, severely lacking today. We are um, really introducing a new model to evaluate company risk adjusted capitalization. You know, right now we have one measure of uh, available capital over required capital and the elements of requ required capital are as we know investments, underwriting, credit, risk of under reserving, etc. What we're doing is we're adding some more advanced tools and uh, improving the, the granularity of the data that will be fed into the new Bacar model. So we're going to introduce uh, stochastic simulation, we're going to model out uh, risk uh, required capital at different VAR levels, whereas we had one before essentially, we'll now have five. So we'll have a much better view of a company's risk adjusted capital, not just at one confidence level, but out into the tail. We'll use better data to drive that view of capital and uh, we'll have I think a more informed discussion with our companies in terms of uh, in terms of what uh, our view of their overall capitalization is. I mean the role of a car is not going to change. I mean it's it's a tool that we have to, to get our view of a company's risk adjusted capitalization. That's still going to be the case and we're always going to continue to look at other quantitative and qualitative measures. We'd like to thank AMBES for their contribution to our program. If you'd like to see more of the First Monday series, visit the AMBES website.